Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Shane. Today, you already know what we're doing. I got my hands on a new Wet n Wild 40 palette. The very controversial, drama-inducing palette. <laughs> I ended up getting this palette because I personally own the James Charles and Morphe palette as well. Um, I've expressed my views on James Charles in a couple videos ago and I'm not really gonna get into it. Regardless of what I think of him himself, <laughs> um, I really do still love his product and I didn't want to waste it. You know what I mean? I still use it for a ton of um, makeup looks and stuff but some of you might be new so you didn't know that like I went in and I wrote the colors um, because I really don't like the slips that have the names on them. I like the names to be right on the palette. So all the names are already on there and that's why my James Charles palette looks like that. Um, but I have this palette because I want to compare it to the 40 palette and actually see are there as as many similarities as there was claimed and just how similar they are how they work in comparison as well so what i'm going to be doing today is one eye i'm going to be using the wet and wild palette the other eye i'm going to be using the james charles palette but i'm going to be using the same colors like if i use let's say this orange from this palette i'm going to find the same orange allegedly <laughs> from the James Charles palette and do it on both eyes and that, I, that way I feel like we can really do a nice comparison. This did take a while to get to me to be honest with you. I ordered it several weeks ago and I had difficulty um, this tape on here that I can't get off. I had difficulty tracking my package because I had created an account with Wet n Wild and it kept saying that my password was wrong and I had just created it. Like I knew that I was using the correct um, password. So when I was trying to log on, when they actually shipped my, pa uh, my palette, I need scissors, what the heck? Okay, there we go. <laughs> so when they finally shipped my palette, I had a really hard time actually tracking it, but it did take quite a while to get to me. So um, just keep that in mind if you are ordering online. I have kept my eyes open every time I've gone into drugstores where Wet n Wild is sold, if they would happen to have this, and I have yet to find a store that has it. Maybe Ulta might, but okay, here we go. So it comes out. I do like the packaging. Ooh. I don't really try Wet n Wild too, too much. I know there's a huge controversy on whether or not they were cruelty free. The packaging was a little dirty. I was just wiping off some fallout. Um, uh, but I think that they're cruelty free here in the States and then don't really have any say like when they land in third party retailers. Um, but opening it up, wow, <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> so it does have a little protective cover on here, which is, what is up? <laughs> they love their tape, holy smokes. <laughs> it is taped down, there are no shade names at all on this palette, so that's an immediate difference. Um, the, <laughs> oh my goodness, so you can see, or maybe not, but it doesn't look like some of the pans are sitting too well in this palette. But here it is, and th there's obvious dis differences right away. I'm gonna open up the James Charles palette right next to it and take a thorough look. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> I could see why. Um, I could see why he would think that this is an immediate copy, but there are some major differences that I'm noticing right away. First of all, um, how am I gonna hold this? <laughs> First of all, James Charles palette obviously has the larger sizes in the middle. Now that can be um, a controversy because he came out with his mini palette where they're all kind of smaller. This is still bigger than his mini palette. I must say that the pans sit much better in the James Charles palette. They're more like inlaid where these just feel like they were glued and sort of like popped in like a little bit cheaper. Um, I'll put the price points and everything down, um, down below, but 
uh, this is definitely more expensive so I would expect a better quality first looking at it you're like oh yeah like they they're almost exactly the same but they're almost exactly the same like I can tell you right now pinkity drinkity this like matte pink color up here is replaced by a shimmer down here you see where there's like there's three blues the hello playground and brother down here they're kind of like a teal they're more like green colors and then a shimmery blue um, so like I could go through this entire thing and go through every color um, yes it's a little strange that the colors are like really really similarly in the same spot like the greens are obviously down here with the yellow in both palettes the like top half of the palette is like all your neutral shades in both the palettes um, but like you know they have a white up here where the white is down here um, so there are <laughs> there's a lot of similar shades obviously the like kind of the reds and oranges up here in both palettes um, but uh, bottom line is James doesn't own the rainbow they James doesn't own um, colors you know and I don't know the process of actually making a palette but I just I, I mean I it's hard to say because you know if I created my own palette and then a makeup line came out and it was so similar to mine yes I would probably kind of feel like a stab in the gut but there wouldn't really be anything that I could do with it makeup companies have been making dupes for products for forever there are a thousand dupes for the naked palettes Revol makeup revolution has a ton of dupes on palettes you know so it's kind of like you weren't the first and you're definitely not going to be the last my original idea was to take like let's say i wanted to do my crease with james's canvas color well if i look up here it's a white so i don't want them to be completely different but what i'm going to do for today's look is find the closest matching shade in the Wet n Wild palette compared to the James Charles palette and kind of do something with that. I don't know if I want to go for something colorful. I think I'm going to go for something green today um, just because I am wearing like a green sweater and there are plenty of greens to kind of play with. So I think th I think that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm going to go into work today and they're probably going to be like, what happened? But <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> for the sake of the video, <laughs> let's just get right into it. It's kind of difficult, however, I will say to juggle two large palettes here <laughs> and as I mentioned wet and wild does not have the shade names you guys will just kind of have to see what colors I use now ladies on my lap and see see what I can do also I had a sad moment when my Regina highlighter fell open and broke the highlighter is actually still intact but the compact itself broke which was so sad. With starting with the James Charles palette, I think I am just gonna start with canvas because that's what we talked about and it's a nice transitions shade. So this is what I'm gonna start with first. And I guess this side will be my James side and this side will be my wet and wild side. I gotta be honest with you, it's not even really showing up. <laughs> um, maybe it's just cause, I, I don't know, I put, um, I put concealer on but this color is just really, not doing anything. <laughs> so I guess instead I'm gonna start and go in with Code James, which is like this orangey color here. There we go. <laughs> so I took this color into my crease and I'm also sweeping it on that outer corner. Then I'm gonna try to find a similar color in the Wet n Wild palette. So it's kind of like a burnt orange. And honestly, I'm finding like a combination of colors to possibly use. There's these two that are really similar. Um, this one here is probably the most like it. So I think I'm gonna use this one. Whoa. Okay, kickback. I don't know if you guys saw that, but mm, there's a lot of um, a lot of fallout from the pan. So much more than the James palette in my opinion. But let's see how closely related these two colors are. Oh, that's actually a pretty decent match. Quality wise so far, I can already tell that the James palette definitely has more pigmentation. I'm gonna have to go back in to this wet and wild color um, to get this kind of result. I'm gonna dip in again and continue 
blending in. So that's both colors blended. Um, so like I said, very, very, very similar color. If I didn't know that there were different colors, I probably wouldn't have noticed. Um, I will say that both of them blend really well. I think this, the James one took a little less effort. And like I said, it, it was just, it was more pigmentation. So I think the quality is a little bit better, but that was only our first color. So we're going to keep going because we're going with greens. I'm going to, I'm going to pick up a guac from the James from the James palette and it's like this shimmery kind of olivey green color and James is over here so I'm gonna take a small fluffy brush and I'm just gonna start working this into the socket of my crease as well as blending it a little bit into the outer corner so it blended beautifully. I really enjoyed it. Now, even though I'm using the same brush, I am wiping it off between shadows. So the James Charles shadows aren't mixing with the Wet n Wild colors. You know what I mean? So just keep that in mind. So the closest color in the Wet n Wild palette to guac would probably be this one, which happens to be in the exact same location for each palette. This one seems a little darker though, so we might start noticing differences in our eyes. Hopefully not too much. <laughs> On the eyes, I can barely tell that they're different colors. And you know what? It's blending quite well. I think it has more pigmentation than the orange shade that we applied. It's blending beautifully. I'm not having any major problems. Both palettes are having kickback a little bit um, underneath my eyes. Okay, both eyes side by side. I mean, I can't really tell a major difference. Maybe you guys can let me know in the community tab. Um, but so far, so good. Next, I want a nice bright shade on my lids. So I'm debating on going into face or ring. Whoa. <laughs> Wet and wild James Charles. Whoop. Wow, okay, so swatching them, you can definitely tell the James has just more pigmentation. The second to largest pan here in the palette. And there's nothing on my brush, like no setting spray or anything. It's just plain shadow. And I'm just gonna start packing this on my lid. And I said, I'm gonna start packing this on my lid. Okay. Not really impressed. I'm gonna go into ring light in the, in the James palette and see. Okay. Better. Better, for sure. I'm gonna bring it about a little over halfway. And then in the Wet n Wild palette, I think the color that is most similar to ring light would probably be this one here. Um, but that's one of the ones that I swatched and I really didn't get a good swatch of it. So I don't really have high hopes for this one. We're going to try it anyways. Ooh, yikey, yikey, yikey. I'm like really digging into this palette, trying to pick up some pigmentation. We're going to keep digging. I'm like picking up so much product trying to get, oh, yikes. <laughs> this is the one that I can see the biggest difference so far. So you can see with the James one that it's pretty smooth. Um, this one is more like a chunky glitter. So this was my least favorite color used so far in the Wet n Wild palette. I'm gonna wipe away some of this fallout because it's getting a little crazy and I don't want to smudge too much. I can also tell wiping away the fallout that the James one wiped away really nicely while the Wet n Wild one is still leaving some specks behind. So that's something to keep in mind too. Then I'm gonna pick up the matte green shade called Daddy from the James palette. I'm just going to fill in the gap between the really nice ring light color and then our outer V. Once again, blended really nicely, blended really beautifully, didn't have any problems. Now, back into our Wet n Wild palette. Um, the closest one to Daddy is probably, oh, oosh. Color-wise, it's this one. But I, again, same spot as the James palette, but I don't think it's a complete matte. Like this one here is a complete matte, but it's not quite the right color, so. Maybe I can take a combination of the two, but I don't think that's really going to make a difference. So I'm just going to take the one that's most similar in color, but not a matte. Not as vibrant in color. And again, it's it's not matte at all. Okay. <laughs> this looks 
completely nutty. <laughs> ah! Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna throw on um, some, <laughs> I'm gonna finish my top lashes real quick and throw on some uh, waterline color and I'll be right back to finish up with some eyeshadows. My lashes are still drying a little bit so you might see a little bit of glue. <laughs> Give it just a minute, I promise it'll be gone. So let us go ahead and finish up the bottom lashes. Now I'm pretty much gonna be using the same shadows. Should I do like a purple or something just so we incorporate another color? I think that might be pretty. I think that's what we're gonna do. I think I wanna try, I think I wanna try this purple down here which is called single and I'm picking this color up on a morphe 321 brush and I'm just going to sweep this underneath the lower lash line because green and purple are so pretty together I had a mini panic attack and I'm like oh my gosh did I do it on the right eye and I did okay <laughs> so this is still all the James eye oh that would have been bad. And then in the Wet n Wild palette, once again happens to be in the same spot and it's this matte color. I'm just glad that it's also a matte. So cleaned off my brush, we're gonna go into this unnamed shade of purple and we'll do this eye with it. What? Ooh. Sorry, just a lot of pigmentation. Wasn't expecting it. <laughs> That's so bad to say. Oh my gosh. No, this was definitely the most pigmented that of the colors that I think we used out of the Wet n Wild palette. And it seems like it's a little bit brighter than Singles too. Singles a little darker. Not crazy noticeable, but definitely if you're trying to compare the two, you can tell a difference. And then last but not least, I just want to add a quick inner corner highlight. I think we're just going to go back into the ring lights of the palette. So that means for Wet n Wild, we're going to be picking up this one, which was my least favorite shadow that we used out of the Wet n Pile. Wet n Pile. <laughs> the Wet n Wild palette today for sure. But again, just to keep it consistent, we're going to pack this right on. I mean, it's not bad as an inner corner. I just didn't like it all over the lid. And then into James's ring light. Okay, you can tell. <laughs> uh, you can tell the difference, so I'm gonna try to... <laughs> that is it for eyeshadows. I'm gonna throw on a little bit of bottom mascara. I did add some highlighter already when I went and added my lashes, so we're just gonna finish off with some lips. I think I'm just gonna take Morphe's Virgin. And then I'm gonna take, I've been loving this lip gloss from Morphe. You're gonna see it in an upcoming tutorial, I believe, because I'm gonna push this one out, but this one is called Free Bird. And then last but not least, I want the makeup to last all day, so I'm gonna use Jeffree's and Morphe's setting spray. Okay guys, so that is it. This side is James, this side is Wet n Wild. Can you guys tell a major difference? Like I said, up close, like holding a mirror up close, I can tell, especially, ugh, there's a little hair, especially with the ring light color. This side definitely has like chunkier glitters, where this side is just like much more smooth and the mattes stand out a little bit more, I think. I did really like this purple in the Wet n Wild palette, but the James palette is just as pretty. So like looking straight on, I wouldn't be like, your eyes are completely different, but there are subtle differences. Now, A, it's not 100% the James Charles palette. I There are a lot of similarities, don't get me wrong, but I do like that they have the option to have a cheaper, like drugstore version of James's palette. It still has a beautiful array of colors. There were a ton of colors that I didn't get to play in here. Like the reds would be super interesting to see if they were like really pigmented, but I did want to try the greens, which are some of my favorite personal eyeshadow colors to use on myself. So um, I did really like that they came out with this just to give people another option because some people, quite frankly, don't want to support Wet n Wild. Some people don't want to support James Charles but if you still really like the palette at least you have options out there and again they did have like some shades that like in the James Charles palette were matte but in the wet n wild palette were shimmery so there are differences I will say like I said in the beginning the quality I think 
um, varies from each palette. I think the James Charles palette just has a better quality overall. I think the palette was built a little bit better as well. But if you're on a budget but still want like a nice rainbow palette to work with, I would definitely recommend getting this. I'm not saying it's a bad palette at all. Nine out of ten of the colors that I really, really liked. And even the ring light color, which I was really iffy on, ended up really being pretty in the inner corner. So maybe some of the colors will work in some areas areas of your makeup. Now I have bold palettes, so I have a lot of colors <laughs> to work with in my collection. Size-wise, the James Charles palette seems like just a hair bigger. Like you can see it just hanging over the edge. The bottoms are flush. It is just hanging over. So it's like a I guess knees. It is the tiniest bits uh, bigger than the Wet n Wild palette, but I also feel like they hold the same amount of shades, but the James Charles palette also has bigger pans, so they are gonna need some more room for that. So I wouldn't say like this one's super compact where this one is super bulky. That's where the James Charles mini palette comes into play. Um, but overall, I'm really excited. I really wanted to know like what was the hype of this Wet n Wild palette? Why did it cause so much drama? I could see where the drama stems, but at the same time, I'm trying to give a very unbiased opinion I do like that they have that other option of the palette that is like really, really, really similar but also has its own differences. So with that being said, let me know what you guys think in my community tab or my Instagram. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.